Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're continuing with Node School. In this episode we're focusing again on mixing nodes together. We'll take a look at the color ramp and we'll think a bit about layering. So here I am in the basic scene. I'll delete the default cube and add a UV sphere. So shift A to add and add a UV sphere. G, Z, 1 to move it above the ground. Now I'll go across to the shading tab and start work on my shading. Let's zoom in just a touch and right click shade smooth. Now it's probably worth getting rid of these windows on the side here so I can right click where they join and join areas and move that arrow over to one side to get rid of one of these windows. You don't have to do that but I'm optimizing the space. Okay so I'm in look dev mode for the moment and we'll stay there for now. So what I want you to do to start off as a bit of practice is mix two shaders together. So have a go at that. Okay, so hopefully you remember, you can come down here to press new and we can create an interesting shader here. Let's say a blue metal that's fairly shiny. And then I'll just duplicate this node, shift D to duplicate and create something different, maybe a green plastic that's relatively shiny as well. Now to mix these together, if you've got the Node Wrangler installed, edit preferences add-ons, make sure the Node Wrangler is ticked. You can press control shift right click and drag between the two and that creates a mix shader. Now we can easily mix between the two, there's the blue one, there's the green one and there's halfway in between. Okay so that's creating a mix shader. Now if you haven't already I'd like you to adapt this material so that random parts of it are one shader and the other parts are the other. Hopefully that made sense, have a go at that. Okay so hopefully you understood what I was getting at there. What I want you to do is shift A, add in a texture and let's just use a musgrave for this one and plug the factor into the factor. So this will now control which bits are blue and which bits are green or which bits are using this shader and which bits are using this shader. So if I go in here, I can then start changing these settings and vary which bits are plastic, which bits are metallic and so forth. Now if we have another look at the Musgrave texture, control shift left click, the black information will be the top shader and the white information will be the bottom. Now what I'd like to do now is try and get more of a crisp edge so that it's really clear which bits are white and which bits are black. Because at the moment if I control shift left click on the mix shader there's a sort of blending between the two and that as we can see from the Musgrave texture there's sort of grey areas in here and I want to try and minimize that. Now the node that we need to use for that is called the color ramp. So I'll click on the mix shader again and move this across Shift A to add, it's under Converter. So Converter, Color Ramp. And if you can't remember where these things are, you've got a search node here, and I can type in Color, and there's the Color Ramp. So I'll put that between my Musgrave texture and my factor. Now it is having a slight effect. If I press M to mute this node, you can see the difference it makes. So we can see the green plastic coming out a bit more. I'll press M again to unmute that, and I'll press Control and Shift so we can see the results of what the color ramp's doing. Now if I pull the blacks up, you can see them moving into the whites, and if I pull the whites in, you can see them moving into the blacks slightly. They're actually more overtaking the grays, so what I was saying is we want a sharper transition between the two shaders down here, so bringing these closer together is offering me that. Now if I control shift left click on the mix shader, we can see we've got a much sharper transition. So I've got rid of the gray, which is that bit in between where they start blurring in between. So this section here is the grays. And if I try and squeeze that in, we can make the edges much sharper. Now there is a few things to note here. You can change the colors of these sliders. So at the moment it's black and white. So I could change this to gray and then we're only gonna get half of this bottom blue material here. And the same with the black, I can change that all towards grey and then we'll get a sort of mix between the two. You can also give them a colour if you want, but in this case it's not making any difference because it's into the factor. So it's just converting the colour into black and white information. So I'll click on that and I'll put it back to white. I can drag the saturation slider and bring it back into the middle. And this one back to black. And we're back here. You've also got the interpolation between the two colours here. So you've got ease at the moment and that's gradually going from black to white. But there are other options if I move these in. You can see different options here that are changing that interpolation. Now for a really sharp change, as you can see there, a constant is quite good. So it goes straight to white and you can see that's taken away all the greys. 
and we can then move the slider closer or further away. You can also, if I go back to ease for now and move these apart, you can add more sliders in. So we could make this perhaps gray, but make this one fully white. And you can then see what used to be the gray bits in the middle here are now the white bits, and what used to be the white bits are now sort of partially see-through. So we can get some interesting options with a color ramp. And the best thing to do is just play with it, try and make 10 different textures using color ramps and see what differences you're going to get. So in order to delete these, we can click on them and press the minus button, and I'll put it back to roughly where it was, somewhere around there. So that's the basics of the color ramp. And as a reminder, we use this to enhance and change the details coming from this Musgrave texture. And there's several other uses for it, which we'll come into later in the series. Okay, so here's a quick challenge. See if you can make this material. So if I press Control Spacebar to go back out of full screen mode, you can see it's got a very similar setup to what we had before, but this time I'm using an emission as one of my shaders going into the mix shader rather than the principled BSDF. I've also used the color ramp, but I used the wave texture with some distortion, as you can see there. Now you can make this look slightly better as well, I think, by putting on the bloom and it gives it that sort of soft glow. We could also change the background color, which would make it look at that bit better, but we'll leave that for now. What I want to talk about next is the layering. So let's duplicate this one, Shift D, and move it across in the X, and I'll give it a new material, but base it on the last one. Now let's say we quite like this material, I'll just change it up a bit so it's got a bit of difference about it. But we wanted some more patches over the top of a green plasticky material or something like that. So we need a new layer. The best way to think about this is to move these all into one sort of group or frame. So if I press Shift A now and Layout, I can bring up the frame option just here and that brings in this. I'll make that a bit bigger. I'll grab all these things and just move them over my frame and that will move them inside this frame. Now I can grab them all together and move them. You can also, which may help, is minimize these things. If you don't really need to know the attributes of that anymore, you can minimize all these to make them that bit smaller. And frames are great because I can move this and you can see the frame moving with it because it's inside the frame. And you can select the frame and press delete to get rid of it if you want to. So we've got this texture that makes up this. We want to add another layer on top of it. So let's shift A to add. And let's say we're gonna make a principled BSDF and I'll change the look of it, maybe a metallic, maybe a goldy color or something. Now we can't see the results of this, so let's press Control Shift, left click, and then we can see what it looks like. And we've got a nice sort of richy gold color. Now I want to mix these two, so I can press Control Shift, right click and drag between this mix shader and the principled BSDF, and that creates a new mix. I'll just minimize this so you can kind of see what's going on and visualize it. So if I bring up the factor, I can bring up the bottom one, which is this whole material inside the frame, or I bring it down, it brings the top one, which is this gold material. And this is how we layer them. It's not a great mix at the moment because it's that classic sort of blend between the two. So we could do with putting a texture into here to mix them together. So let's shift A, add texture, and we'll go for the Musgrave. Plug that into the factor. And now we've got this really odd thing happening here, where we've got some of the gold coming through and then bits of the green, bits of the purple. So let's look at the Musgrave texture. So the white bits will be the bottom material and the black bits will be the top material. It is a bit strange because we've got an emission sort of shining through the gold texture. So it is looking a little bit odd at the moment. So let's try and make this Musgrave texture a bit sharper so we can see the clear distinction. Have a think how we can do that. So yes, we need a color ramp to come into here. I'm just going to control shift left click there. So the color ramp needs to come in here. So shift A to add, converter, color ramp. Bring that in there. And we can manually make it a bit sharper like this. And you can really see the distinction now, or we could even use the constant like so and move these around as we see fit. So that's using the color ramps and that's layering. Now beyond this, you can even have multiple layers. So let's bring these in. I'll add a new principled BSDF. And I'll control shift left click on this. So we're just seeing this at the moment. Let's keep it at white, but make it nice and shiny. So it's a white plastic. So I'll minimize this. 
and then we can control shift right click and drag to the other mix shader to create yet another one and we've got the white plastic mixed with all this lot together and let's add another texture this time we'll choose the Voronoi as our factor and once again you can use a color ramp I'll just borrow this color ramp from here shift D and drag it across the noodle so it joins in there and I'll change it about a bit and we've got all sorts of messiness now what you do have to think about is the layers and whatever's in the top layer will cover up anything that's in this layer which will cover up anything that's in this layer so they do stack on top of each other like that and kind of cancel each other out so it's a good idea to have a play with these different things see how many layer stacks you can get going as a quick reminder we reminded ourselves of mixed shaders and then plugging them into each other and we also talked about the color ramp and how we can modify the mix with textures but enhance them with this color ramp so if you've got any questions then do comment below do show your results as well you could get across to the discord server and share your results there and thanks for watching and i'll see you next time